Your pharmacy rotations are the most important part of your pharmacy education, and here is how you ace them. Hello everyone and welcome back to Happy Farm Life. My name is Sierra Richard. I'm a recent pharmacy grad and a pharmacy residency graduate who is wanting to help you rock your rotations. Tip number one is to treat every rotation like a job interview, because it just might be. You see, the quality of work that you do on rotations is a reflection of how you would work in a job. Whether the place is actually hiring at that moment or maybe hiring closer to graduation time, it's important to make a good impression. I know several friends who have taken jobs that they were offered on interviews and I have been offered jobs as well. So it's really important that you're always professional, you treat it like you are interviewing for that job just the entire month or six weeks or however long the rotation is. Even if this is a rotation where you're like, this is not what I wanna do with my life, you never know what's gonna happen. You never know where that person's gonna go or where you're gonna end up. So it's always very important to treat it like a job interview, no matter if it's an area of interest or not. Let's face it, we never know what's gonna happen like a pandemic as you're graduating residency. Who would have thought? The connections you're making on your rotations are very important and pharmacy is a small world, so don't burn bridges and always make sure it's like a job interview. The next tip is one that the schools will harp on, but it is arrive on time. Being late for your rotations not only ruins that connection that we just talked about that is so important to build with your preceptors in the rotation site, but it also can put you at risk of failing. Yes, failing. That lack of professionalism can actually fail your rotation. So I always recommend planning to be there early. The first day, I usually would say 20 to 30 minutes early because you don't know traffic, you haven't actually driven there. Checking Google about a week ahead of time is what I would typically do before the rotation start to see approximately how long it's gonna take me. After that, I would always show up 10 to 15 minutes early every single day because if I was running late for whatever reason, like there was a wreck or traffic was worse than normal, I was still there on time or even ahead of time. This also gives you some time to settle in, maybe before your preceptor shows up, get a head start at looking at patients, or maybe grab a coffee if that's what you need in the morning. Approximately a week out from your rotation, you want to go ahead and make contact with your preceptor. This is important whether you're doing IPPEs, APPs, or even in residency. Always reaching out to your preceptor, giving them plenty of time to respond to you is important. This is a good time to ask questions that you need to know prior to the first day. Don't bombard them, but you need to know where you're going to meet them, what the dress code is. Some places don't like white coats, some of them do. Ask for any pre-rotation readings, anything that you should bring with you on the first day. Those are the type of questions you want to do in this first contact email. Try to personalize it. Tell them why you're excited about the rotation, what you're looking forward to, but don't go too far. Don't make it a long lengthy email. This is one of those things that you could really get caught up in. You know, the things, like I said, you need to know. Another thing that's important is for you to make sure that this email is super professional. So whether you know this person outside of the academia setting, whether it's maybe somebody you've worked with before or was a recent student, it doesn't matter. Always be professional. You don't want to be using their first name, their doctor, whatever, even if you know them already. They may quickly tell you not to do that, but that is okay. You need to do it up front. On the back end of that rotation, make sure you're trying to keep contact with those preceptors. Ask if they can be a part of your LinkedIn. See if they're okay with you reaching out to them in the future if you have questions. If you see them at professional events, always make sure you say hi and are courteous. A lot of your preceptors do want to know where you ended up, so it's always good to make that contact again. Some of these preceptors may be somebody you want to ask for a letter of reference, and you can do that either on the last day or make sure you have a way to contact them later on that is a preferred method for them. My next tip is to set personal goals for the rotation. You know going into the rotation likely what you are leaning towards or what your primary areas of interest are and whether or not that rotation meets those or not. But regardless, there is something to be learned from every single one of your pharmacy rotation experiences. For example, my last rotation during pharmacy school was cardiology, and at that point, I had already accepted a position in a pediatric residency program. I actually had my preceptor say to me, well, I don't know what I can do to help you with what you want to do in your future. But I had a goal ready and set in mind. 
So I told her that I wanted to focus on really understanding diuretics and how these blood pressure medicines that were common in pediatric patients as well worked. I also said that I wanted to focus on my counseling skills because counseling skills can be applied to all patient populations, not just pediatrics. So those are just some examples of how you can take a rotation that is not really in your area of interest and shift it to where you can still get something really good out of it. Setting those goals and letting your preceptor know what your career goals are helps them guide the rotation. For example, we did a lot of topic discussions on anticoagulants during that cardiology rotation because that's something that is used in pediatric patients as well. My point being, whether the rotation you are on is the top of your list for career options or the very bottom, you can find something good to bring out of it to better you as a professional. And while you have goals for yourself as far as what you want to learn, your preceptors have expectations of what they would like you to learn as well. Ask the preceptors what they want and what their expectations actually are. Whether you're in a pass-fail system, whether you have honors, whether it is a graded system, ask what you need to get that top mark on those rotations. Not only do this for the rotation as a whole, But on day one, start asking questions about your assignments. What do you expect from my journal club? Is there a particular format? Do you want me to send it to you ahead of time? For soap notes, again, particular format or do you not care? What is your focus when I do a soap note? Basically, every single preceptor is different. Their expectations are going to be different and you need to figure out what those are in order to do your best. My next tip is to take notes. This notebook has been with me all during my residency year. I have, I mean, just filled these pages up with lots of tips and things that I need to know during rotation times. I highly recommend getting a notebook. I started doing this as an IPPE student and have continued on. There's small notebooks for your pockets that go in your white coat or scrub pockets, and then you can do a larger notebook like I did for residency when I felt like I needed a little bit more in-depth notes and I wasn't wearing a white coat at my residency site. This isn't just good for notes, for information that you're learning, but also a good opportunity to write down the questions your preceptor wants you to follow up on. A quick way to burn a bridge on your rotations is not knowing the questions that your preceptor asked you and not following up with them. Invest in a notebook, write it down. You also need to dress for success and while scrubs are oh so tempting and there may be days where you wear them like you're watching a procedure or something like that, dress for success which means dressing nice, dressing professional. This is again a job interview so even if you have the option to do those things, set yourself apart, dress nice. This shows your preceptor that you mean business and you are going to work really hard on that rotation. And it's also a good reminder to keep it professional at all times. You may know other people on the rotation or the preceptors themselves, and it does not matter. In any case, you need to keep it professional. This is a professional environment. Again, job interview. So you need to make sure that you're always speaking professionally, acting professionally, even if you have a more casual relationship with the person outside of your rotations. My next tip is to pack a healthy lunch. I'm going to be honest here, hospital food is not always created equal, and if you're at a Walgreens or Walmart, the food that you find in their frozen section probably isn't your best option for a nutritious meal. Additionally, all of those add up, and it's probably going to be more expensive than you making something at home. So some of you are probably saying, Sierra, like, that's a little bit difficult, I'm not a good cook, or I don't have the time. I've used all those excuses before, and you're right. It's hard as a student. Which is why I am going to be doing videos on this in the future, some quick healthy meals that don't require a lot of skills in the kitchen and can get you out the door with a healthy meal in no time. So make sure that you have hit that subscribe button and turned on the bell notifications so you do not miss those videos. My next tip is to create a good morning routine. I'm gonna be sharing mine in a future video as well. So again, make sure you're subscribed but a healthy morning routine can get you set up for the rest of your day. And you may have to tweak it for each of your rotations and that's totally fine. But having some sort of routine in the morning, whether it's just getting up a little early, getting ready, having your coffee, or if it's something a little bit more elaborate like mine has developed into, regardless, this is a good opportunity for you. My healthy morning routine was a game changer for me as a resident, so I want you to have that experience as well. Another great tip is to keep a rolling list of your interventions. When you do something awesome for a patient, whether you make a recommendation or you have a good counseling experience, write that thing down in your lovely notebook 
So you could talk about it on your evaluations with your preceptor. This is also really great to keep a list of for your job interviews. So whenever you are thinking about those situational questions, you have something in the back of your mind ready to go. My next tip is to be realistic on your self-evaluations. Here's the thing, guys. The self-evaluations, a lot of people don't want to talk about the stuff that they struggled with or didn't want to work on, but that sets you apart as a student. That means you are more self-aware than other students. If you don't say it, we think you don't know it. And then it's going to be like, okay, now I'm at the preceptor, have to tell you this awkward situation that you were in and didn't do great at. That makes you really stand out as a professional and would kick butt in an interview, because again, remember your rotations are an interview, is if you own those mistakes, own those things you needed to grow on, and then show them how you're going to fix it. Whether this is the midpoint and you have opportunity to fix it, or you're reflecting back on what you're going to do to fix it in the future, or what you did to fix it, either way, it is an awesome opportunity to showcase your self-awareness and how you, as a professional, take ownership and action for the things that you need to work and improve on. My next tip is to give your preceptors good, constructive feedback. They really want this whether they have been in practice for 10 years or you're their very first student. Helping them become a better preceptor and make the experience better is something that preceptors really want to hear from you. It also shows that you can give good feedback, which is important for an employer. Some things to tell them can be good feedback, like that was a super helpful topic discussion. And then you can also tell them information such as, I really think if you have another student that maybe you should do this topic discussion earlier. Those are just a couple of examples, but any type of feedback that you have, as long as it's constructive and you give opportunities and thoughts about ways to improve it, can be helpful for your preceptors and make a good impression on your rotations. My next tip is to use RX Prep for topic discussions. Once the newest version is available coming out this fall, I would recommend grabbing it. And then whenever you're on rotations and you have topic discussions for a particular area that's in RX Prep, Read that chapter. You're obviously going to need to go into more depth for your topic discussion, but RX Prep is a great place to start. It also helps you check a box on something that you studied for your NAPLEX, which if you want more tips on NAPLEX studying, you can check out this video right here. Link will be down below in the description. My last tip is the proper way to wrap up your rotation, and that is a handwritten thank you card. Personalized handwritten thank you cards are a little old fashioned and do go farther than that email, but that is something that your preceptor will remember. It's extremely professional and just in good taste because they are spending a lot of time investing in you, whether you realize it or not. And you would likely do a thank you if you did an interview, so why wouldn't you do it for your rotation? I do recommend typing out what you're going to say in that Word document beforehand. That way you don't make any typos or spelling errors and you can see it all laid out before you write it in the card so you don't make any mistakes. All right, that is what I have for you. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the bell so you get notifications so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you next time. Bye.